this is David from Big Bits, and in this video, we're going to get started with our series on PineScript uh, editing and developing for TradingView to plot out whatever we want an indicator, a strategy, a combination of indicators, whatever we want. We're going to be able to plot it out on TradingView. If you've seen all kinds of crazy scripts on TradingView or you have ideas for strategies, I'm going to show you how we can learn to do that all on our own. Now, I am also going to provide you with the source code on all of the scripts. It's going to be available on TradingView. I'll show you that at the end of the video. If you're curious, you can go look at my profile, BigBits.io on TradingView. But what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the process of creating a new indicator. And then I'm going to show you all of the key components of the script and show you kind of what they mean and what they are doing for the script that we're working on. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to create a new script. I'm going to assume since you're watching this video first you probably haven't done a script before or maybe you have and maybe you just forgot how to. So first we need to go to the Pine Editor. This is where you can work with your Pine script. Let's open that up. I've already got my indicator up that we're going to work with but you'll want to choose new and it comes with some templates but I use a blank indicator script and I wrote all of this and I have kind of come up with a little bit of a style guide for the development of the tutorial scripts that I'm coming up with you'll notice I force the pine script version uh, this is just a little bit of code that tells the pine script uh, processor in the back end or on your CPU, however they do it, it tells it that it has to use the fourth version of PineScript. And it has slight different syntax and that just means you have to write things a certain way uh, with PineScript for it to work with version 4. And I also added a section about the author, uh, the version of PineScript, and you can also find my published scripts here. If you're viewing this uh, from TradingView and you just happen to come across this, you'll be able to find this by using that URL. And then I also added a URL to the documentation for everything we're going to be working with. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll go through all of this. I'm going to kind of show you or tell you exactly what this is. This is just a simple moving average. And as you can see, we're using a 21 period moving average on the daily chart on Bitcoin. So the purple line is a 21 period moving average for Bitcoin over about the last year now. It's very simple, but there's a lot of things we have to know. So the first thing we do when we're creating our own indicators, we have to provide a line that's a calling function called study. And this pretty much just tells PineScript that we're going to be creating an indicator. Uh, it accepts a few different parameters, and parameters are just essentially options for this particular function to tell it more information. And you can see when you hover over it, it can give you some more information, or if you go to the URL that I have here in the code comments, it'll take you to the actual uh, user manual for PineScript version 4, and it'll tell you what everything in there means. I'm not going to go over all of the reference documentation, but I'll show you what some of this stuff means. So the short title is what's going to show up on the chart. It needs to be short so you don't overwhelm the screen with all kinds of information. Now the title itself is simple moving average. Uh, it, it's a very simple title to use. It doesn't really mean too much to me here. Uh, if you are going to be publishing your own scripts ever, make sure that you have the title set correctly here because this is what will show up in the public library. Okay, so once we've done that, there is one other option that is the overlay option. Now, when you choose overlay of true, it's going to plot anything that you wanted onto the chart. It's going to overlay it on the existing chart. If you have it set to false, it'll create a new uh, plot area below this. And to show you this, we'll add the built in uh, MACD, and you'll see that this will pull up another plot area and then you can see that information on a different chart below the actual price chart. So I've removed that 
now that we've told it what our indicator or our study is going to be called and given it some information about itself, now we need to know information about the indicator itself. Well, we know we want to create a simple moving average. So what do we need to create a simple moving average? Well, we need the period for the simple moving average. So this line is calculated by looking back at all of the data within the period and by default it's going to be 21 so we're going to look back 21 candles and average those out and it's going to plot that particular point on the line now since the price changes you can see the line going up and down that's why they call it a moving average now the reason it's important to use this input function is because that is what the study or the indicator uses for you to configure the study on the chart. So we have one input and that is for the moving average period. By default I have it set to 21. Let's change it to 200. Hey, I changed the scene. What do you think about that? Change that back. Okay, so, oh boy, having a few issues here. I'm testing my new recording software, so there's some hot keys that I think are overlapping with what I'm doing here. I have to change those around. Anyway, we've changed our input for our moving average period to 200, and you can see now the line is a 200 period moving average, and it acted sort of as resistance here and here, and it never really got back up to it here during the bear market, and perhaps it'll form some sort of support on the way back up for Bitcoin over time. Now, you've seen how we can edit the information being used for our simple moving average, but we haven't calculated the simple moving average yet. Um, but before we do that, I just wanted to point out uh, the reference information is on here for the input as well. So you can go and you can look at the user manual to see what's going on with the input and the different things that you can do with that, minimum values, maximum values, things like that. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, there, a lot of times the options aren't required. So if you're looking at other people's scripts or my scripts, you won't see all of the options in there. So it's a good idea to look at the resources to see what other options are available as well. Now, the moving average value itself, the value that's being plotted and is shown on this purple line, that is calculated using a built-in function called simple moving average, or the SMA. The SMA is calculated by uh, looking at the close of every candle, looking back the period that we set with our input. So it's right now, it's looking back 200 periods, calculating the average close of all of those candles, and plotting that information on the purple line. So, as with the other items, I have added the built-in function uh, for the simple moving average here. Uh, if you're not aware, a simple moving average is just a straight, normal average, what you learn in, I guess, fourth or fifth grade, maybe sixth grade pre-algebra where you take a bunch of numbers add them together and divide them by the number of uh, entries in the list that you were working with uh, it's just a straight up average and there are very very many different moving averages that uh, have come up and you can have access to all of those through trading view but we're just going to use a simple moving average now and once we calculate that we'll be able to plot it so we set our moving average value equal to that of this built-in SMA function using the close and the moving average period. And we can finally plot this, and the plot, of course, tells it to plot it on the chart, write it, draw it, however you want to say it. It's putting the line on the chart now. And we can tell it what color to use and the line width to use, and there are also many other different options for plotting. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit later, but you can see you can choose the color, uh, you can do all sorts of things with plotting, and not even all of it's here. So we'll have to get back into that a little bit later, but that just draws it on there. And we can also set the width, you can see it's a pretty wide line. So that kind of does it for this particular script. Uh, I've tried to keep it very simple. I hope you can understand where I'm coming from here. If you want to go ahead and add it, 
to any chart that you have so that you can look at the source code. You can go to the public library and you can search for scripting tutorial one simple moving average. And you can see I've already got it started on quite a few others already and you're more than welcome to go ahead and look at those. Once you add it to the chart it'll use that default 21 period moving average that we started with and if you want to look at the source code and maybe make a copy of it and start working on your own code just click on those brackets up here and you can see the source code if you want to start working on your own you can choose make a copy it's pretty pretty easy to work with if you want to go ahead and look at all of my scripts and maybe by the time you're seeing this video we're a lot further along in the series maybe we're even done with the series you can take a look at my profile on TradingView and go to the script section and you can see all of the scripts that I've done and while we're here I can give you an idea of what we're looking ahead to in the future in this series we're going to next take a look at plotting three different lines and they're going to use a different moving average other than a simple moving average. Then we're going to take a look at using more than one type of moving average as an option. So we'll give people an option of what type of moving average they want to use for each of the three lines. Then we will add on some more moving averages uh, that weren't included on the tutorial three and we'll also provide some other options such as uh, the source so we plotted the moving average in this video based on the close of the candle in this particular video we'll go over how users can choose whether to plot or, or to calculate their moving averages based on the high of the candle or a median or other types of sources that are available built in through TradingView and then uh, the fifth video I've already gotten pretty much all the source material prepared for and that is a triple moving average crossover so we're going to take what we've learned here and then we're going to detect crossovers and plot them on the chart so it's you can already see there's a lot to look forward to and if you have any ideas please leave them in a comment below I am very interested to see what people want to know or if there are any scripts out there that you like or already use and you would like to see replicated, uh, maybe they're closed script and we want to see if we can replicate them on our own, or closed source, excuse me, and we want to see if we can replicate them on our own, we can try that as well. Or if you just want to understand what's happening in an open source script, that's fine as well. So uh, thank you for watching the video. Please leave a like if you like the video. Subscribe if you want to see the tutorials that I'm working on. Uh, they're going to be really cool. Uh, obviously, when once you get into talking about crossovers, you're pretty much creating a strategy with an indicator. And we'll, we'll eventually get into strategies as well. But uh, once you can detect the crossovers, you might be able to use those as an alert or maybe just an indicator when you look at the chart that, hey, maybe the bearishness is over with and we're starting to enter a bull market. You know, you can use that kind of information to help you point out these things. So that even though you have these lines on the chart, it's really easy to see what's going on. So there's a lot of good things we can do. Um, yeah, that's all. See you all soon. Thanks for watching. And make sure to check in on the next video so that you can see how we do the multiple lines. Thank you.